Hi there, my name's Ski Oakenfall and I'm a tutor here at Point Blank Online Music College. I also run my own label, Primordial Records, and over the years I've had releases on labels like BBE, Talking Loud, Ministry of Sound and Tronic Soul. So I'm here today to give you a tutorial on Ableton Live, which is one of the subjects I teach here at the college. You can get loads more free content from the school's website, which is pointblankonline.net. Just go to the free courses section there. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create the deep bass line sound, which has become a real signature of bass music. And as a reference, I'm going to use the killer track by Julio Bashmore called Battle for Middle U, which I'm sure you all know. So I hope you enjoy it. OK, so this is my Ableton set. So first of all, let's have a listen to the Julio Bashmore track, Battle for Middle You. Here we go. I've kind of looped up um, a little breakdown section so you can listen to the bass sound. So it's got quite a bite to the bass. Got quite a strong attack. And a sustain as well. Actually very similar to an 808 kick drum. I mean, it's a possibility that's the sound that was used. If I play your sound, there we go. Problem is, if we use the sample, if we tune it up and down, we're going to lose some of the body of the sound. So it made me think about a lot of the early synths, like the MKS-80, which had some really killer bass sounds on it. But Ableton's got a great device called Analog, which I really think would be perfect to have a go at recreating this bass sound. So let's have a look. What I've done on this scene here is uh, I've uh, used the slice to MIDI function on Ableton to chop up the beat. Let's have a listen to that. There we go. And on this track here, this is the bass that I've created. Skis, Bashmore bass. So let's have a look to see what I've used. First of all, I've got the analog device here, which you can find up in the instrument section. It's analog here. And I've also got a compressor on it that I'm using and a bit of EQ. But let's focus on the analog device for the moment and see what we've got. So I'm using two oscillators. The first oscillator here is a sine wave and the second oscillator here is a saw wave. And the reason I've got this second oscillator is to give the sound a bit more body. If I take this second oscillator out right here and play you the sound. Very sine wavy. If I bring it in, it just adds a little bit more body to the sound, which I think it needs. So let's have a look to see what else I've got. Um, on this oscillator, first oscillator, I'm using the pitch envelope um, and that's what I'm using to actually give the sound a bit of bite, a bit of attack. If I take that off here using this pitch envelope uh, percentage level, you can see you can't hear. If I bring it up, you can see what it's doing and I've set a very, very short time got it at 6%. If we, if we increase that, you get more of a kind of laser sound. But we want it really short, which is what's going to give it the attack. Um, I've got a filter on it. I'm putting the filter on. Without the filter, you can hear it's got that really kind of sharp, top-endy sound. Um, with the filter on it, we can control that. We can roll off that kind of top end um, and also give it, a, give it a bit of resonance. And it also adds a little bit of body to the sound as well. And uh, I'm just using the low pass 12 filter on that, which I think is working pretty well. Then let's have a look at the uh, amplifier section where the, uh, we can control the envelope. I've got quite a long release. If we take that off, I'll just take the second, uh, second oscillator off for the moment. If, you can, if I take that off, you can see it's just a very sort of short, short sound, but we want to increase that. There we go. Um, and we can control the attack as well. It might be that it's it's too kind of clicky, so we can take that attack off a little bit if we wanted to, but I quite like it being quite attacky. Um, so like I said, we've got this, I've got this second oscillator here as well, which is adding a little bit more body. 
We can control how much body we have actually by just controlling the low pass filter. But for me, that's kind of enough. What I also did is take both of these oscillators down two octaves. Without that, then you could just kind of transpose your MIDI controller, your keyboard down. But because we're only really interested in these kind of lower ranges of the sound, I brought that down as well. So let's have a listen to that again. And let's con compare it to the original. Now let's play our version. Not bad. So let's just have a look at some of the other elements that I've got here. So I put a compressor on because I wanted to try to bring out the attack and also the sustain as well. If we take it off, it's just a little bit kind of clean sounding and with it on, just sounds a little bit sharper and a bit fatter basically and then we've got the EQ8 and I wanted to boost um, around 140 150 Hertz just to kind of really really make it kind of a full big sound There's also another effect that we can use, which is some sidechain compression. And um, I'll just quickly show you how to do that. This is the beat that I've got here. I've duplicated this onto another track and I've called it side uh, kick for sidechain. And I'll just play that to you. All it is is just a kick drum. To be honest, it could be anything, but we want to use this sound to feed into the sidechain compression, which I've got over the bass sound. We don't want it in the output stage, so I'm just going to mute it. But you can see that it's still playing. Now if I go back to the bass sound and then to the compressor, and if we turn the sidechain on here, and now you can see that I've selected the audio from kick for sidechain. And you can see just on this level meter here that the it's it's listening to that kick. So I'm just going to solo the bass for the moment. If we bring down this threshold, you can see that it's dipping. Wherever that kick is happening, it's kind of dipping the sound. And it's a classic technique that's used loads at the moment uh, in dance music. It can be quite a nice effect on the bass or on chords or pads or those kind of sounds. It just kind of gives the track a bit more energy. If we bring the, if we bring the beat back in, we can hear how it's, how it's working. And we can really have it to a smaller or bigger degree, just depending on how much we're just using our ears really to see what it sounds like. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to head over to pointblankonline.net for some more great videos. And I'll catch you again very soon.